That takes us to our next fight on deck. We got a featherweight scrap here between mm -hmm. a couple of dudes who have some outstanding records, man. We got Chaz <laughs> Kelly coming in with 18 and three record, taking on Jamal Emmers, who has an 18 and five record, man. These are insane here. So, you know, let's dive into Chaz a little bit. Like we said, 18 and three record. Been in the UFC since 2014, man. He's gone seven and three there. Another dude who doesn't seem to fight that often, but his last fight was in 2019. He got a unanimous decision victory against Jordan Griffin. Uh, one thing that kind of stood out to me is apart from that one, all of his other fights have literally been by KO or some sort of finish. <laughs> <I know. laughs> it's like just straight excitement, right? Oh, man. You know that got me amped for sure. Hondo. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So, so, yeah, you know, we'll see if he can keep that going or what the, the finished numbers look like. Mm -hmm. But, you know, on the other side, we got Jamal Emmer's 18-5 and five record. You know, the pretty boy, and, and that's not me calling him that. That's his name. <laughs> so, you know, take no offense to that one. But he made his UFC debut in 2020 against who, Siraj? You know who, my man! Oh, tell me, tell me, tell me. Is it your favorite guy? Oh, it's and, and when you say it, it becomes my favorite, yeah. <laughs> but yo, you know, if you so go further down, just to quickly touch on Juliana Rosa, right there, right? He lost to Juliana yeah. Rosa. And by how? Head kick, Juliana Rosa, <laughs> pulling out those big long kicks. And those it's funny, right? Legs, I wanted to take you further down there because I wanted to take you to Tiago Moises, your favorite boy. <laughs> oh, yeah. He Love screwed that, your boy man. Bobby Green. <laughs> screwed your boy Bobby Green out of a win, in your opinion. And yo, I've actually seen a lot of people agree with you, man. Like a lot of people had yeah. Bobby Green winning that fight. Yeah, man. It's it's you're not alone there. <laughs> you know, I just thought that was my uh, bias in there for not sure. Not at all. But, not uh, at all. There's a lot of people that agree. <laughs> Damn, so that that's a pretty credible uh, history from Mr. Exactly, Jamali, right? Man. Yeah, and so that's what takes me into Chaz Kelly, right? Like this guy also was just you look at his names at the time the people he fought were big names like jason knight's a champion in, in small organizations at some point in his career you know mm -hmm. these are the kind of guys where you just you didn't take those next steps and i really believe that when you look at skelly he just had like a massive injury right in training camp so he's yeah. out in sanford mma like he has good camps and you know he recently just talked about how he had to go through surgery it was so bad that you know they didn't even know if if he should be fighting again and that kind of stuff. And it took him that long Jeez. to recover. And he's even talking about how, like, if things like this kind of happen more, he's going to have to consider retirement, how he wants to get into being an analyst and a commentator more. So it's like, you know, I don't want to say the one foot out the door mentality, but like this guy's giving it his all when he can, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And it's just for him, it's like when he can. And so he's, he's talking about his age and all that kind of thing. So, Again, when you look at the record, when you look at the people he was supposed to fight and has fought, if it wasn't for these, you know, injuries and these surgeries, like he he had a really good chance. Problem is, he's not the best. He's not the best striker, to be honest. And I really like what he brings from an all-around MMA game. But a guy like Emerson, man, like we're talking about yeah. dudes here. Like this guy, yeah. this guy lost a split decision to Giga Chikazi, who, you know, he might be the biggest name that no one's really talking about on this yeah, side absolutely. of the world because. I think he's blowing up uh, back home. I think he's blowing up mm. uh, amongst like, you know, the diehards uh, guys like you who are just following fights through and through, you know, you know, whether you're starting within the last year or not, like that's a guy who you will remember, you know, like he's, he's just For putting sure. on performances and that's where the competition, right. You have to always chalk it up to the kind of competition, despite, you know, our boy Chad yeah. seeing it when he was younger, like this could be the new crop. Yeah, and, and it's funny, you're literally confirming the lopsided nature that I thought this was kind mm -hmm. of playing out to be given the names mm -hmm. that Jamal has seen recently. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, the, the kind of veteran aspect Chaz has been taking, you know, mm -hmm. as of late. So let's dive right into the line here. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we, we kind of have a lean on the favorite here. So what number are you seeing here, man? Well, it's interesting because like, if you look at the topology rankings, Skelly outranks him pretty pretty large so it's it's really it's it's kind of funny but playing recency bias based on the Vegas mentality like I got Emmers as the favorite here and based on little things like that makes me think I have him too high but I'm gonna trust that these are the kind of guys that people like to pound and so I'm gonna go Emmers at a minus 220. Oh man yo so yeah give him a bell give him a bell I'm, I'm tired of hearing this goddamn bell so just give him a bell 
Le'Veon Bell. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but I'm not going to lie, man. You were like 10, 15 basis points off from me just leaving this room and ending this. So. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, I believe you had said minus 220. I uh, looking it up live, he is a minus 200. Right. If you guys didn't know, he was probably going to call me a cheater at this point and walk out. <laughs> Oh, hey, you, you nailed this minus 200. That's the end of USC Vegas 19. It's been a pleasure. <laughs> I'll see you next time. <laughs> <sighs> so, you know, minus 200, right in line with what you're thinking. And, and honestly, I think that's a fair line. And when you, when you look at all the things that have unfolded recently, you know, mm-hmm. the, the level of prospect that this guy is, at, you know, I think it's an accurate line. I think it's a fair line. The problem that this scares me, if you look at Emmers' is like on record takedown defense, it's literally 100%. And I think so, Skelly's like number one area is to kind of grind fights out, right? Kind of try to work mm-hmm. him on the ground. But if if Emmers is coming as in as a superior athlete who's like switching stance and mixing up really well on the feet and keeping him at the distance, you know, like really being able to, to keep him at that distance. Because like if, if you ask me avoiding the work up against the fence and, and being taken down, like that that's – that's money for Emmer's, in my opinion, because I think he for has sure. the pedigree to to kind of fight almost anywhere. But I just think that if you're trying to play into your strength and your, and your opponent's weaknesses, it, it really seems like the striking battle would be where he can kind of separate himself a bit. And, and he's proven mm-hmm. himself, right? Like I think a, a split decision loss to a guy like Giga when you're when you're primarily striking with him is a big deal. Um, to Julian Arosa loss, I mean that's my guy. I mean, uh, he just he's, he's entertainment for me, you know. Uh, inside, yeah, I'm gonna go check those guy. highlights for sure. Yeah, you yeah. Need to inside, see him, don't man for sure. Yeah, he's uh, and it's funny because I would love for you to see the highlights of that tough too, because that's who you will fall in love with as well, right? Him as a person, he's just such a sweet guy, you know. And you get to see their family. It's just he's he's one of those guys that you will remember if you watch the show, kind of thing. And that's where, yeah, you know even in terms of being able to put on a show, that's the kind of outcomes you get, right? You don't really know when he's going to put on his best. Michael Johnson, cough, cough, couldn't handle Clay Guida's wrestling. <laughs> I mean, let's let's be honest here. This is going to be kind of... That man was just too much of a beast, you know? I, like you see, you had met, texted me on the side. Looks yeah, like he just could go for another five rounds here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's that's Guida for you, know? Just Blanca's up and just... Yeah, I was going to say those Blanca power-ups. Yeah. <laughs> And just electrocutes you for 15 minutes. It's just, unless you could do something about it and stay on the feet, you're over. It's over. Yeah, for sure. So, you know, stay tuned for that one. You know, I do personally believe that motivation is going to play a large factor into this because, you know, Chaz is no joke, man. There, there's no denying that. So I, I do believe motivation might play a huge part in this one for him. The, th- and the one thing that kind of just... I don't see like huge size differences and stuff like that. So for me, it's just like, mm-hmm. if this stays in the feed and if it stays at a distance, unfortunately, like I just don't want to see, you know, Chaz just get picked apart. But I mean, it's one of those things where this has the makings of a very, very nice MMA match. If things go both of their ways, you know, like I think if ways, you, yeah. Yeah. If you see them mix it up quite a bit, I think you're going to see a really fun fight. Yeah, if they can both execute to their game plans, it's going to mm-hmm. be a real treat for sure. The kind of fight, like, yeah, if it went three rounds, like, even if you didn't bet on it kind of thing, like, yeah, you probably enjoyed that fight, man. Enjoy it, yeah. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Well, you know, it's safe to say we are pumped for this one. Mm-hmm. UFC Vegas 19 takes place next Saturday, headlined by our boy, the Black Beast, taking on Curtis Blades. We got a bunch of beauty heavyweight fights on that card, mm-hmm. so I'm super pumped for it, you know. That wraps it up today. If you mm-hmm. haven't already done so, smash that like button. Give Hit that bell button. Give us that subscribe, the follow. All Let's our Instagram, it, Twitter is all there. Any questions, comments you guys have, just send them our way. Anything else, Siraj? I mean, you know, just be ready. Like, we keep pumping this fight up, but be ready for a five-round wrestling match where Curtis Blades isn't able to finish this man and Derek Lewis isn't able to get off his back after three rounds, and you're just watching a guy get taken down for, for five rounds. So just be ready for that as well. <laughs> Yeah. Nice little disclaimer there, my man. Yeah. Always a pleasure, dude. Take care. You too, my guy. Take care.